All right, chapter nine gets us into um, some meat of the story. So it starts out with Atticus saying, you can just take that back, boy. And she is um, getting into a fight with Cecil Jacobs. So Cecil Jacobs is a friend of theirs. You're going to see his name repeatedly throughout the book. Um, he's a, f a friend, but he has said something that has really made Scout mad and she's ready to fight him. And she says, you better take it back. And he's like, I won't. And a little bit later in the chapter, she comes back to it after, she, after she's explained some things to you. And she remembers that Atticus has asked her not to fight with her fists. He says, try using your head for once. It's a good one instead of your fists. Okay. So this is some maturing for Scout in that she holds her fist down and she walks away from Cecil Jacobs, which he calls her a coward for walking away from a fight. And um, she decides that it's worth it to be called a coward if it means doing what Atticus asked her. He asks so little of us that we could do this one thing for him. Okay. And so we start to see and we get some talk about the ugliness that is going to happen to Scout and Jem because of a court case that Atticus is involved in. So there's some things that we need to talk about, okay? Atticus explains to Scout that he is has been appointed to be the defense attorney for Tom Robinson. Tom Robinson is a black man who's been accused of doing something that... The only proof of it is she says it happened and he says it didn't. It's her word against his. So I'm just going to put it out there for you um, that what happens is Mayella Yule, remember the Yule's burst the first day of school, the dirty, nasty kid, he, no snap, no slow to the school teacher, the kid that had the cootie, that kid mean, nasty. His family, his sister, is accusing Tom Robinson, a black man, of raping her. She, a white girl, a white trashy girl, is accusing a black man, a good moral black man, of raping her. And so Tom has been arrested and he's in jail. And Atticus has been appointed to be his defense attorney. The people in town... The majority of the people say that Atticus shouldn't be working to actually defend this man. Because in this time period, because of the racism, everyone just assumes that this black man has done it. A white person's word was worth way more than a black person's word. And so people in town just jump to the, the conclusion that if she says it happened, a white girl, we side with the white girl against the black man. It doesn't matter that the Yules are trashy, nasty, ignorant, mean, awful people. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that Tom Robinson is a good, moral hard-working, church-going, family-loving man. None of that matters. What matters is she's white and he's black. So a lot of people in the town are mad at Atticus because he's actually working to defend Tom Robinson. They feel that he's black, he's guilty. You shouldn't defend him. It goes so far that even at Christmas... Cousin Francis uses the same name in talking about Atticus and says Aunt Alexandra, he, which is Atticus's sister, says that Atticus is an embarrassment to the family. He's going to ruin this family and that he's a, and what they're calling him is a nigger lover. I don't ever, ever ever want to hear you use that name. I don't ever, ever, ever want to hear of you using the word nigger. Ever. You have absolutely no reason to use that word. On page 108, 
Atticus describes it to Scout as, it's an ugly name. Let's see exactly what he says on page 108. Just a minute, it's from a Father Shepherd. Um, it's a name that ignorant, trashy people use to put down other people. He tells her it's common and it's ugly. This word was used by whites to put down blacks. It's a negative, nasty, ugly word, and you have no right to use it. The last couple of years in our school, this word has surfaced in a huge way. It shouldn't. Get rid of it. Especially if you are a white student. You have, as a white person, you have absolutely no reason ever to use this word. It is not a word that should be in your vocabulary ever. Do I make myself clear? I hope so. I don't edit it out of the book because I want you to know this. I want to have this discussion with you. I wish that I was in front of you right now so that you could understand and feel the anger that it puts in me to think that you use this word. Some of you don't realize the connotation of the word and you're using it because you are ignorant, which means you don't know. Some of you are using it because you do know it. And that makes you trash. Harper Lee uses it in this book because it was culturally accurate. And because this is the way that they spoke to one another. And it's supposed to jar you. It's supposed to make you go, ooh. I hope that the first time I said it, you were like, ooh, she said it. And if that made you feel that way, that's awesome. Because that means that you know that it's wrong. This is what people are calling Atticus. It's not a compliment. To say that he loves black people was not a compliment. And when Scout asks him, Atticus, are you? Do you love blacks? And he says, yes, I do. Atticus is different. Atticus says, I love everybody. Atticus doesn't care about the color of someone's skin. And he's actually working this case. Scout asks him, are we going to win? And he says, no. She says, then why are you trying? And he says, just because we know we're going to lose doesn't mean we shouldn't try. It's kind of like when you're playing sports and you're going up a real, against a really good team, do you walk out there and be like, eh, we're going to lose anyway, so here, here's the ball. We're not even going to play. No. You rise to the challenge and you fight harder than you've ever fought to try to win that game. And that's what Atticus says here. Just because we know we're going to lose doesn't mean we shouldn't try. We still have to try. So, um, Cousin France, so Scout walked away from the fight from Cecil Jacobs when he used this comment. Now, when uh, Cousin Francis uses it, he's taunting her. He, she, he's running around outside and he's saying it and she finally catches him and she beats him up. And Uncle Jack comes out, and um, Cousin Francis, he's just a brat. He's just a spoiled brat. And he's, he lies and says, oh, she called me a whore, lady. And um, Uncle Jack has already reprimanded Scout because she's got this campaign where she's trying to get out of going to school. And so she started cussing fluently, says Atticus. And um, Uncle Jack has said, you know, that's not ladylike. You won't do that while I'm here. If you do, it's going to cause you a problem. So when Francis says, she called me a whore lady, he's like, see, 
your mouth got you in trouble. And he actually whips her. He spanks her. When it says that she saw the ants up close, it means her face went over his knee. Her face was down by the dirt. Her butt was up and he spanked her. And she's mad. Atticus has never spanked her. Ever. He's threatened. But he's never done it. And she's really mad. So when Uncle Jack comes in her room later, um, she won't even talk to him. And then finally she's like, you're not fair. And she explains to him that you didn't listen to both sides of the story, which is another huge life lesson. You have to hear both sides of the story. He only heard Cousin Francis's. He never asked her for her side. He just jumped and punished her when he didn't know the full story. So another life lesson from this book. Make sure you know both sides of the story before you make a judgment call. Okay? And then she says, you know, I mean, she tells him why she did it. Uncle Jack is mad that this is what Cousin Francis said to her. He feels bad. He apologizes. He bandages up her hand. But she makes him promise, don't tell Atticus. Please don't tell him that's why I got in a fight. I don't want him to know that I lost my temper over him. He asked me not to, and I let him down. Please don't tell him. So when Jack goes back out into the living room to talk to Atticus, Scout goes to get a drink of water, and she stands there and eavesdrops. And she hears Atticus and um, Jack talking about these things. And, you know, he Atticus tells Jack some really um, deep important information and scout overhears it and she says this is the last line of the chapter i never realized until years later that atticus knew i was there and wanted me to hear what he said and it's one of those situations where he needs to talk he's talking to jack he's having this adult conversation but it's stuff that scout needs to hear but sometimes sometimes it's easier how do i say this when you're talking to kids and you try to tell them something, it always feels like a lecture, right? Like right now, you feel like I just lectured you about the N-word. You feel like I'm lecturing you about, you know, race and, and white versus black and things like that. And when we're getting lectured, we often have this uh, immediate um, sort of denial and we jump right into defending ourselves. He doesn't want to have that conversation with Scout and make her, you know, jump to defend herself. He wants to have the conversation where she just listens and she just takes it to heart and she can't argue back and she can't defend herself because she's hiding, but he wants her to hear what he has to say. And what he tells Uncle Jack is that Scout and Jem are going to absorb some really ugly things in the coming months. He, te he tells Jack, yep. This is my case that's going to affect me personally. It's the case that I have to take because it's the right thing to do. And Uncle Jack even makes an allusion, a reference to something you're supposed to know, when he says, huh, let this cup pass from you. Reference to the Bible, reference to Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, praying, asking God, you know, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. But it wasn't. It was what Jesus had to endure and go through. And that's the reference that you're supposed to get from that line from Uncle Jack. This is something that Atticus has to do. This is a sacrifice that he has to make for himself and for the good of humanity. That's a pretty huge statement right there. For the good of humanity? Atticus describes the case. It's a black man's word against the Yules. They talk about the Yules being the trashy, gross, low-down, mean, nasty people that live out by the dump for generation after generation. They're just trashy. They're, they're not good people. Um, and he says that he hopes that Jem and Scout can get through this without catching Makem's usual disease. And he's talking about racism. Atticus is different than most of the people in town. Atticus does not see color. He sees people. And he hopes that he can raise Scout and Jem to be the same way. Your keyword for chapter eight. I missed it. 
on the last video, so hopefully you'll catch it this time. Your keyword for chapter... <laughs> okay, let's go. Keyword for chapter 8 is blanket. Your keyword for chapter 9 is... Swearing. Okay. Chapter 8 was blanket. Chapter 9, swearing. <laughs>